Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Draw Tight Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Toyota RAV4. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when it's installed and it is going to be a hidden cross tube so all that you're going to see is the receiver tube opening and the safety chain loops from the bottom so you get all the usability without really sacrificing any looks. And this one is going to be an inch and a quarter which is going to limit you a little bit as far as accessories like ball mounts, cargo carriers and bike racks but I have one of these on my vehicle and I'm still able to use it quite often. Now when putting your accessories in place you are going to use a half inch pin and clip and it's not included with the hitch. A lot of your accessories when you pick those up will come with one but if you want to pick up a locking one we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer and that way you can load your accessories up, lock it in place and not have to worry about them disappearing. If you plan on pulling a trailer your safety chain loops are nice and accessible so a standard S hook will work as well as a larger clevis style with no problems. Now speaking of towing, weight capacities on this are fairly decent at a class two, and that's gonna be a gross trailer weight rating of 3,500 pounds, which is gonna be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up. You also have a tongue weight rating of 350 pounds, which is gonna be the downward pressure that's put on the receiver tube opening. So that's gonna be some of your suspended accessories and the weight that it can support. So that's gonna be enough definitely for a bike rack and maybe two to three bikes without overloading it. Now. You also want to check the vehicle's owner's manual and compare it with what the hitch is rated at and that way you're not overloading either of those so just take the lowest of those two numbers. When choosing accessories, especially folding ones, you want to make sure that you are not going to have any contact with your fascia and you also want to make sure if you're getting a ball mount that you can hook up to your trailer without damage. So measuring from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, we're looking at about three and a half inches and as far as your ground clearance to determine a rise or a drop for a ball mount, you're looking at about right at 12 and a half inches and that's pretty decent. Something to keep in mind too is gonna to be when you have your accessories loaded up like your cargo carrier bike rack, as you go up an incline, it is gonna to tilt towards the ground. So just keep that in mind when going up those inclines. Now, as far as the insulation goes, this one is super easy. Should be able to knock it out in your driveway or garage in about 30 minutes. You are gonna to have to lower the muffler down. Uh, so there's three isolators you'll have to pry off. But other than that, you're really just gonna put the hitch up in place, bolt it in, torque it down, and then you're ready to go. So speaking of that installation, let's take a look at that so you can get yours installed. To begin our installation, we are gonna to wanna to lower down our muffler. This is gonna allow us to get our hitch up in place and be able to bolt up. And it's pretty easy to do, but you do wanna make sure you're supporting the exhaust because it can hang down once you have the isolators take, taken off and you don't wanna cause any issues downstream by it bending. So make sure you have either a block of wood or uh, just something to kind of cradle this while you're working on it. So if you are in your garage or your driveway, a block of wood's gonna be able to do that. Now we're on a lift, so I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap. And sometimes these, these isolators can get kind of stuck on the metal and not want to move that well. So to help it along, you can go ahead and spray it with a, either, a, I have this heavy duty silicone here. You can use a penetrating oil or even a soapy water solution to kind of just help move this along. Then gonna take a pry bar or a long flathead screwdriver, anything to kind of just wedge in here and then peel that isolator back until it pops off the hanger. And you can take it off at the top or bottom. It doesn't really matter. Main thing is we're just getting this separated. Now there's gonna be one that's identical to this on the other side. And then we're also gonna have this center one and it's just gonna be the same concept here. So go ahead and get that separated as well. Now we're gonna head over to the side of our frame here and this is where the hitch is gonna bolt up. And Toyota's done a really good job. They put some stickers here. We're gonna peel those off and those stickers help prevent any dust, dirt, debris, anything building up in those weld nuts. And normally on other vehicles, you're gonna to have to kind of clean those out. But these stickers, if yours are in place, they're gonna make it nice and easy. We know that that's gonna be clean. So there's one here, there's also this one, and then you also have two on the other side of the vehicle. So go ahead, you can get those taken off. And if you need to, you can kind of push in on the center and that should give you one of those edges to be able to peel off. We're gonna get ready to put our hitch up in position. So if you need to grab an extra set of hands to put it up, by all means, go ahead and get someone to help you. Uh, now, hardware is pretty simple here. These are gonna go into those weld nuts that, um, that had those stickers. And we have a conical tooth washer. It's got teeth here, and these are gonna bite into the hitch. So just make sure you have it facing this way and have them in hand. And what we're gonna do, once we raise it up in place, is just get one started, just a few threads on each side, 
and that way the hitch is going to be supported, making it easier to get the rest of the hardware up. So once we've raised this up, just kind of align it with that hole. You may have to move the hitch around a little bit, but we'll just get this thread started on both sides. With our hitch supported with those two bolts, it's going to be easy to kind of just lift this into place and get our other hardware started as well. Now with our 19 millimeter socket, we'll just go ahead and get these snugged down. Just make sure that they're uh, nice and seated in there. Now on the passenger side, clearance is obviously uh, pretty tight here. You probably noticed that putting these up. Uh, so a ratcheting 19 wrench is probably going to be the best option for this. And we're going to come back with our torque wrench and using the torque settings found in the instruction manual, we're going to torque our bolts down to that proper setting. It's going to make sure that these are going to be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also not too tight, causing stress on the threads. So we'll go through, get these all torqued down. Now on the passenger side, because of that clearance, I'm going to show you uh, a method that we can get those torqued down properly. Now I'm going to be using a crow's foot attachment and this just snaps on and it's going to rotate around but it's going to allow us to kind of get into our spot and that way we can still get this torqued properly. And you will have to rotate it a few times but if you have it tightened down pretty well with that ratcheting wrench earlier it's going to make this a lot quicker. Everything tightened and torqued, all that's left to do is get our exhaust put back in the isolators and start using our hitch. And that was a look and installation of the Draw Tight Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2022 Toyota RAV4.